This episode of Techzilla is brought to you by Carbonite. Time to get our HD Nation on. Look, we fantasize about what kind of home theater we would have if funds were unlimited. <laughs> For some people, <laughs> funds pretty much aren't an issue, and the Wall Street Journal has a really interesting article. Actually, just a just total eye candy. It's the home theaters of the stars. They're basically saying like, an amazing home theater is, or screening room is de rigueur yeah. in Hollywood. Uh, Steven Spielberg, Tom Cruise's screening rooms, details on those some, and many more. Some of the behind the scenes. <laughs> the the insane. Cooling. If you're receiving real film reels to your home theater room. Well, that, if you're Spielberg or, oh, that's pretty or high another end. director. That's a, <laughs> And that could be a screening room. That's pretty beautiful. There we go. That's amazing. Getting close. That's gorgeous. So that's, if you're considering any... That's bigger than my house. If you're considering maybe a remodel in your near future, look, it doesn't have to be... Look, that's a pretty simple color scheme, although I'm sure some of the hardware is pretty high-end. Some nice home theater furniture. Just ideas to think about. These rooms are just... I don't know about the green, though. That's a little crazy. That's, I, I bet, you know what it is? I bet that's the gray room, but with different color you gradients know, put I in the corners. I think you're right, actually. And if that's the case, uh, being able to custom dial in lighting like that, do up rooms Pop like these. machines. Just gorgeous. Oh, back yep. to the beginning. Boop. When I dig out the full basement in my house, that's what I'll do at one end, is the screening. We'll call it the screening room. <laughs> Hey, if you watch HD Nation, then you know how much we love PC-based TV tuners. The Seaton uh, Infinity TV 4 is an example of a cable card tuner that we featured many times on this show. Now, the good folks at Silicon Dust, one of my favorite companies out there, they offer a pair of new tuners that will feed premium cable TV or your over-the-air programming to a compatible PC through its network connection. Uh, no need to crack open that case or attach a new device to the computer. We're talking very easy setup. Uh, the installer for these tools, or for these, for these hardware devices, actually, it's a single file for Mac and Windows computers. Uh, you install it and you run it, and it will find the tuners on your network, get it all installed. Linux supports there too. Uh, like I said, the software detects the networked tuners, performs a channel scan, and it actually includes a Quick TV app that uh, lets you basically check to make sure that it's tuning the channels correctly and that everything's working as it should. So I plug this thing in somewhere near my, my, where my cable comes into the house. Yes, you'd have to be close to that, and somewhere to plug it into your home network, and then the cable card just is stuck right in next to there. And is, do I put one of these on each of the HDTVs where I want to receive the data? No. Actually, this will then deliver the content through your network okay. and reach your, to a computer device, really. So okay. you're talking to a home theater computer that, instead of having to install that tuner in the computer, you'd be able to just to access it across the network. Now, this is the, the Prime tuner, the HD Home Run Prime. That gives your cable card tuning. Now, if you wanted over the air, what you're holding is their dual tuner, beautiful little speedy tuner that incorporates dual tuning over the air, that's ATSC, or unencrypted cable signals as well. They're, that's the actual antenna I was testing it with, and I live up on a pretty tall, or uh, up on like the four, top floor of my building, so I was surprised how good the sensitivity was. Very fast well, channel yeah, scanning. You're, you're 90 feet up in the air, too. I am, but that's a pretty ridiculously <laughs> tiny antenna I was testing with. Dual tuners, but the speed of the tuners and the sensitivity were excellent. And, I, and you have to really have dual tuners nowadays. So you're enabled on your computer tuner software to be able to watch one channel mm -hmm. live while recording a second channel. That's really why you need at least dual tuners. Now for the Prime, it's a three tuner design and it's driven by that single uh, M-Stream cable card. Simple setup, like I mentioned. The software just automatically up, upgrades the internal firmware of the product as soon as you, it detects it and finds it. And it also guides you through the setup process. And I actually have the uh, app here installed. Actually, I'll show the setup in Windows real quick. Uh, I have to say, it's just kind of fun. Here's with both tuners attached in Windows Media Center. Uh, the three tuners for the Prime, the two tuners for the Dual uh, going right along. And yes, confirm, confirm, and... There it is, selected. Oh, and here it is for the signal strength scanning. Again, I've worked with a lot of over-the-air tuners that this process takes forever to go through all of, the, all of the, tu the, the channels that are available and to pull in the signal strength. This blew through it and allowed me to unselect the channels that I didn't receive. Now for the Prime, setting up the cable card. Cable cards are finicky. Either it's just gonna work for you first time or you're gonna have endless amounts of problems trying to get it to work. For me, uh, this is probably the second or third cable card device I've installed personally. I've done it for a lot of other people. I had to make about half a dozen phone calls to my cable provider until they finally escalated up to a case specialist who spent his afternoon diagnosing the problem. Uh, successfully, I might add, it was on their end. 
I then ran into an odd bug with the HD Home Run Prime in Windows Media Center, where the Prime wouldn't tune a channel unless one of its tuners was currently active. It's a catch-22, really, if you think about it. It's an odd bug that some other users have reported, uh, and apparently there's a fix coming in the next software firmware update. The Quick TV part of the program, though, was unaffected, and if I had that running, the other tuners would then be active and accessible. Uh, really, the bottom line for these products, though, Silicon Dust, mm -hmm. it's a home run. HD Home Run, Dual, and the Prime bring TV tuning <laughs> to almost any computer connected to your local network. Now, the Dual is about 100 bucks online, and it's currently my favorite over-the-air tuner for computers, without a doubt. It just worked flawlessly. The cable car tuning Prime, on the other hand, can be had for about $195. And it's close to perfect, except for as far as network tuning devices go. And I'm going to follow up on that one particular bug mm -hmm. I was encountering. A lot of other people experienced no issues like I was experiencing, but other people were and were working on it. Apparently, the next firmware is going to fix it. So, so can you tune more than one channel on this simultaneously? Three tuners in there. So you could oh, wow. be recording up to three things simultaneously. You could be using one of the tuners to watch a live program while recording two other programs. The, the, compare that to, say, the, the Seton Infinity V4 mm -hmm. that has four tuners built into it. I don't really see three or four being such a great difference. I mean, it, it depends. If you have a large household and you're dealing with lots of people watching and sharing a single tuner device, then you might need more. But I think it's just the network-enabled feature, and even for the smallest home theater PCs that have no expansion, uh, these kind of products are perfect because it just requires network access. And it is delivering full quality signals across your network. You get about up to 20 megabit for mm -hmm. over the air reception and, and cable as well if they're delivering full quality with any particular channel. And you figure with three, three channels all going full quality, maybe 60 megabit, it's rare you're ever gonna hit that across your network. Right. It just, it worked, it was pretty easy to set up. I'm just really looking forward to the next firmware update to where I just don't encounter that one little bug I encountered. <laughs> and they are working on it. Now we'll say their forms are very active and it was good to see that, especially if you run into problems out of the box like I did. But like I said, uh, the Dual, my favorite over-the-air tuner, Prime, is just solid. Except for that one little niggling bug I had, and I'm working on that. Dave from Waltham, Massachusetts wrote in, one of the things holding me back from switching from TiVo to Windows Media Center is the lack of a live stream video buffer on the non-pre-scheduled recording tuner ports. For example, CTOM 4 tuner card. Does the Media Center in Windows 8 improve on this at all? For example, if I'm watching a show and suddenly decide to start recording it, would it go back as far as it could in the buffer to get the beginning of the show like a TiVo would? Thanks, love the show, Dave in Waltham, Massachusetts. No. It does not. No. Not yet, anyway. I, I tried it out using Windows 8, actually, with Windows Media Center with the Silicon right. Dust HD Home Run Prime. Uh, and so far, it looks like Windows Media Center in Windows 8, as it currently is, exists, is exactly the same as it was in Windows 7, and I'm hoping that changes. What this person's describing is, say you are watching a show, and you're about 15 minutes in, and you decide to hit that record button. What TiVo will do is actually go back to, the, say, the top of the hour and start recording from the very beginning of the show that you have captured already, rather than what Windows currently does and start recording from the minute or the second you hit the record button and start the recording from that point on, even though the buffer might still contain the show from, say, the first 15 minutes. Unfortunately, that, that's something that should be pretty easy to add or tweak, and I'd be curious to see if any of the other recording applications right. out there outside of Windows Media Center actually do that properly. And if, and if anybody knows that answer, do email us, uh, techzilla at revision3.com or hdnation at revision3.com. Mm. Please let me know. And uh, oh. feeling rather confident, Mr. Heron <laughs> tweeted this comment last week. FYI, all 3D Blu-ray movies can be played in 2D mode with identical quality to a 2D-only Blu-ray movie. Pound the more you know. And within minutes, <laughs> within seconds, I am regretting tweeting that. And uh, this uh, Twitter user, yes, another tweet, tweeted back at me. He promptly replied, actually, not entirely too, true. Uh, some 3D movies that come in a 2D-only version are often a higher bit rate and much better picture quality than the 3D disc. And more examples provided via email. Uh, one was How to Train Your Dragon. Uh, the 3D 2D version is basically 22 megabit, while the 2D version is 24 megabit. Hmm, not much, but here's another example. Avatar 3D, the 2D version, about 21 megabit, while the 2D version up to 28 megabit. And he actually noticed this one, according to him. Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides, the 3D 2D version, about 20, almost 24 megabit while the 2D version bumps it up to almost 26 megabit. Also noticeable. And finally, uh, the 3D 2D version is not always a tad bit darker, sometimes even lighter than the 2D version only. Huh. And although DreamWorks Puss in Boots 3D 2D version is much better than the 2D version only, which has gamma and scaling issues. Wow. Man, there are some good eyeballs out there watching these movies, and <laughs> it's good to know that. So 
and yes. watching your Twitter feed. So <laughs> that too. You know, so it is true. You can play any 3D Blu-ray movie and watch it in 2D mode. However, however, the quality might be slightly different. Not an issue because I'm nah. not buying any 3D Blu-rays. Oh, I'm buying them all the time now. Hey, it's time for the new Blu-ray releases for the week of March 6, 2011. 2011, 2012. This week, The Deer Hunter. Universal continues its 100th anniversary celebration by releasing yet another classic, The Deer Hunter. Starring Robert De Niro, Christopher Walken, and Meryl Streep back when they were all younger than I am. This 1978 film won five Oscars, including Best Picture and Best Director, and is now being released region-free in a VC1 codec. 235 to 1 aspect ratio, and with a DTS HD Master Audio 5.1 soundtrack. Blu-ray.com gives the video quality a 4 out of 5, and the audio gets a 4.5 out of 5. Special features include a feature commentary by the cinematographer, Vilmos Zygmunt, with film journalist Bob Fisher, 17 minutes of deleted and extended scenes, and the same 9-minute featurette included on Universal's other 100th anniversary releases that goes behind the scenes to give you a glimpse of exactly how the restoration process works. That's pretty awesome, by the way. And as always, check out our show notes at techzilla.com or hdnation.tv for links to the rest of this week's Blu-ray releases. And now it's time to thank one of our sponsors. Carbonite is there to protect your pictures, your other files from a computer crash, fire, theft, or an accidental deletion by automatically and continually backing up your files and keeping them securely off-site. You're never going to have to remember to back up again. Now, whether you got one or two computers at home or several computers at your small business, Carbonite is the better backup plan. Over one million customers trust Carbonite to protect their home and small business computer files. Plans start at just 59 bucks a year. Start your free trial at Carbonite.com with the offer code TECHZILLA and you'll get two bonus months if you decide to buy. That's Carbonite.com and the offer code for two bonus months, TECHZILLA. Check it out, people.